Now he's the super vet who spent three decades saving the lives of animals with incredible innovative methods. But for his new project, Noel Fitzpatrick has put down the scalpel and picked up the pen with a moving tribute to one of his four-legged friends. Morning, no, Noel. No. Well, here it is, Kira and me. No, it's Kira. amazing to see it. Do you love it? Well... I like all the... It's a beautiful looking Kira, book. Now. Kira wrote it through me. Yeah. And I think that's why it's so special. It, it looks like she would have wanted it to look. Oh, it's beautiful. The illustrations are gorgeous now. I love that mm. kind of... Look at that. Really nice. That's, 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 bit... that, that's my favourite bit in the middle there where uh, I said... No, the bit with the biscuits because she says... Uh, so I say to her, we don't need to agree on everything as long as we agree on the most important <laughs> thing. And she says... Uh, biscuits, <laughs> and I say no, love. There Aww. you go. Um, and that's what the book like, is. Yeah, but really biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> well, poor Kira did pass away in mm -hmm. 2021. You actually saved her life to begin with, didn't you? Yeah. So she had a bad accident, and thanks to my colleagues and and myself, then operating, uh, all of us saved her. All of us saved her together. But this book is a celebration of companionship with anybody. You know, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother your relative, and in this case, your family member. And in the end, uh, it occurred to me this morning as I was coming in here, I don't suppose very many people in their lives have actually felt the heart of their best friend stop in their fingers. Yeah. And in the end, when I cut down on her chest to try and save her, in the end, my heart, her heart was actually on my fingers as she passed. and. That put me in touch with something ethereal, something that transcends us, and that is unconditional love. Yeah, and that's yeah. A, that, that I think is really important. This is a, well, yeah, it's exactly because this is kind of an ode, really. I think to anyone who has that unconditional love, both for and from an animal, because it's un, it's kind of it's both spoken and it's unspoken, I suppose, with an animal, isn't it? You know, it's very hard to express in words, which is why she wrote the book through me. Because this this isn't a book about grief, this isn't a book about sorrow, this is a book about joy. Yeah, it's a Christmas nice. book about rejoicing in everything that you love about your family at Christmas time. That's why it's all red and glittering. And for for me, having her in my life was the best friend and the best experience I ever had. And I'm so grateful for her being a conduit, a heart stent, through all of the blockages of life. She just cut right through them and said, Daddy, it's great to be alive. Yeah, but you know, when I've, when I've got friends of mine, when I've lost animals, and when I've got friends of mine that lose animals, and mates of mine have always gone, oh, I couldn't do it, I couldn't do it again. And I get it, because you're getting a best friend that you lose in 10 yeah, to 12, 14 years, whatever. And yet, the love you get and the love you, and the love you receive, right, and the love you give, well, like, it's non-judgmental. It's non-transactional. Would you say to people, you know, would you, are you going to get another dog? Would you say to people that go through that grief and go through that pain, yeah, but get back on the horse? Uh, well, I have two beautiful cats in my life, Ricochet and Excalibur, <laughs> and they, they <laughs> great keep me on, on, on my toes. But Excalibur's a bit naughty, though. Uh, Excalibur is naughty. Very naughty. He, he picks up all the little screw things that are on my, the floor of yeah. my office because I'm not the most tidy surgeon, <laughs> and he hides me in my duvet in bed, so when I jump into bed, screw in, <laughs> you know, in the posteriori, and uh, he just sits on the end of the bed going, ha, 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 caught you out again, Dad, I caught you out again. <laughs> But to your point, Dermot, it's not even the, that love. It's the love that we could share with each other. In yeah. a time of man's inhumanity to man, this is a beacon of hope for everybody, no matter whether it's a human or an animal you love. Yeah. No, do you feel like Kira kind of saved your life as well? She did. And I say at the very end of the book, um, and when night's pillow nuzzles back the day, the only light you get to keep is the love you gave away. And it's true for the people we've lost and for the, the animals we've lost. And we need to rejoice in those we have in our lives now. Uh, we live yeah. in a difficult time. So rejoicing in that love every single day is what I get to do. And I'm so grateful that I get to be the guardian angel of that. That's so, lovely. so lovely. Um, you've also done another children's book as well. Uh, the Super Pets and Me. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. So Super Pets and Me is a beautiful book, and I was in a school last Friday of 570 children uh, aged eight and nine yeah. in a sports hall, and it was phenomenal. 
because there could be a, a Nobel Prize winner in there. And they all loved it. I showed them a skeleton. I showed them how our skeleton is the same as a frog skeleton or a cat skeleton. And they were all reading Super Pets and asking, how does the metal bond to the right. bone? And it's fabulous because it makes them inquisitive about innovation through frustration. Yeah. And I also talked to them about bullying and about other problems that they might have and how bullies can't look in the mirror. And I gave them some tips and tricks through that book about how to deal with that. And it was immense for me, a little, a little girl who had had um, a difficult, really difficult time, came up and just gave me a big hug. And I was like, oh, uh, that destroys like, me. Uh, it was amazing. You and, yeah, yeah that, uh, and they come to my tour as well. So I'm touring both of those books and, and other things at the moment. Listen, the tour going? is, is going a, good? yeah, that tour is like, that is not a book tour, I tell you, that is like a rock star. <laughs> it is. It happens to be a vet <laughs> going around. So, so on the tour, <laughs> what, what's amazing is it's all ages. It's like 12 to 108. Yeah. And uh, I get to pull out a guitar and play it very badly. <laughs> I get to dance to Harry Styles music very badly. I get to not sing very badly. Yeah, but people love it, But though. they love it because it's about failure and then success on the top of that, which is the journey of a surgeon. So the tour is, is where I get to express a little bit of Kira and me for the first time in the world mm -hmm. and express to the children and all the adults in the room how we can all become a community of compassion through all the stories of the animals. And yeah. it's wonderful, wonderful. No, I had no idea you had a background in drama, not unlike our Alison here. Is it true <laughs> you once lost out to a role to Colin Farrell? Yes, Colin Farrell is single-handedly responsible. I can uh, see the resemblance. <laughs> no, Alison, <laughs> don't even begin. Oh, don't, don't even. Are unavailable? Don't, don't even. Get me not yeah, <laughs> Don't even begin. Yeah, at the I had done the bill and casualty and heartbeat and that was, and I, I went to drama school because I wanted to know how to translate com complex things because yeah. I had a I have a very clear goal just to change the world you know not, <laughs> just, not just, just a little but thing. you are changing the world I want to I want to instill love where there is not love I want to instill peace where there is not peace I want to instill hope where there is not hope and that's what I want to do with my life the language I have is the bond between a human and an animal, mm -hmm. but I needed to learn that. So I'd done the bill, I'd done the casualty, I'd done the happy. I was on casualty one night as, a, as a, an actor opposite Imogen Stubbs and the following night as a vet and my swan died and the people complained you had an actor killing a swan. <laughs> And it was actually a vet actually uh, pretending to be an actor on the previous night in Casualty. But then I went for my very last role when I realised it wasn't destined to be an actor. And that was uh, me and Colin Farrell for Bally Kiss Angel. I can't believe this. And I lost I out to Bally a better Kiss. man. And that's why all successes stand on the shoulders of failure. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever told Colin Farrell that story? I have, and he laughed his head off. <laughs> yeah, he laughed his head off. And I said, well, I bet you've never performed in Scunthorpe. <laughs> And I, and, and I do this week. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Oh, you're incredible. Thank you, mate. Absolutely As amazing. As always. Don't know where you get the time, literally. He doesn't even sleep, this guy. I know. Uh, Noel's new but Kira and me is out today. Best Thank you so much, Thanks guys. Million, Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.